Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mining Chamber video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about power supplies and what you should know when you're buying them or using them in general. So we'll be giving you tips about how to use these power supplies, as well as we're going to go through all these ports and tell you what they do. And then we will also briefly cover server power supplies and talk about them as well. And after that, we are going to go over different adapters. So we'll be covering splitters and then Molex to six pin, Sierra to six pin and then also the power supply, dual power supply connectors. So if you guys have any questions, please let us know. And if we didn't miss anything or mention anything wrong, please also let us know in the comments below. We hope you guys enjoy this video. Okay guys, so the first thing we want to start off this video with is saying thank you to Red Panda Mining for sending us four different power supplies. I don't know why he would do that but it was so nice of him and we have to get him back one way or another. He sent us one server power supply and three regular ATX power supplies. So we will use them for this video to talk about power supplies in general and how to work with them. Okay so first let's talk about the most common choice for all miners which is the ATX power supply. ATX power supplies come in different ratings in wattage. Wattage is what informs you of how much power this PSU can deliver. And then one thing you want to keep in mind when you're looking at the watts is for example if you're buying a 1200 watt PSU, it doesn't mean that you should be using 1200 watts exactly because it is recommended to only use 80% of how much it can provide. So if it's a 1200 watt power supply, then you should only use 960 watts off of it. If you go above it by little, it's not a problem, but just be wary of this. Now there's also moments where your overclocks for the mining rig reset and then your GPUs end up pulling more watts to keep mining and in those situations you need to keep it in mind and you need to make sure that you're prepared for this. So for example if you have 4 Radeon 7s hooked up to a 1200 watts power supply, if you properly overclock those Radeon 7s you're probably consuming around 190 watts each card which means 760 watts for all 4 cards. But what if these overclocks reset or crash? So if they do crash which it tends to happen in Windows. If the cards can't be stable at those ranges, the overclocks are most likely going to reset. And if the miner continues to try to mine with the stock overclocks, and then you will be consuming around 300 to 350 watts per card. Which means at a system total level, you will be going beyond 1200 watts, which is what your power supply can provide. And that will end up killing your power supply. So in these scenarios, you need to make sure that you have enough watts to run the system and it's worse, just like you can run it in its best. If you get two 750 watts power supply for four Radeon 7s or two 1000 watts power supply for six, then you will be on the safe side. The goal is to find out that it crashed, fix the overclocks right away, and then you will be set. Make sure that the cards are not running at full power because that is consuming a lot of watts. We recently did a video about the Radeon 7s where we overclocked them and provided performance and efficiency settings. So if you'd like to check that out, we will leave it in the description below. Now let's talk about ratings. The ratings refer to the efficiency of the power supply. So if you get a platinum or titanium one, it will waste less energy while it's traveling through the strands to the hardware. So now to give you a good idea of their efficiency, let's go over the percentage chart. The main percentages we will look at are the 100% since in most scenarios we will be utilizing around 80% of our power supply wattage. So first we are going to cross out the first three options because we do not recommend getting anything lower than silver for your power supplies. Now for efficiency, silver is at 85% efficient, gold is at 87 and platinum is at 89 and lastly titanium is at 90% efficiency. Since we are only using 80% of the power supply, we will probably be getting better efficiency than the numbers we just provided, since these are at 100% utilization of the power supply. Now looking at these numbers, you can know how much money they will save you in electricity costs. If your electricity is too expensive, for example, the titanium is 90% efficient, which means you will only be losing out 10% of the power draw while it's traveling around the hardware. That 10% can be considered as a 10% fee for your power supply. So if you're using 1000 watts, then you're spending about 100 watts fee for running it at a certain level. We will leave a link in the descriptions below for a great example to look at. So now let's talk about what cables the power supplies come with. 
Every power supply you buy will come with a different set of cables and different ports as well. The higher the wattage, the more cables you will get to run more GPUs. Now let's go through different cables so you can have an idea of what you can use them for. First we have SATA. SATA is mostly used to power your storage device, whether it's an SSD or an HDD, as well as a fan controller for your RGB fans if you have some. In some scenarios, you will be powering your GPU risers as well through SATA, which we will cover more in the next section of this video. Next, we have Molex. Molex is most commonly used for powering your mining rig fans, if you choose to install any, as well as the onboard Molex plugs that supplements additional power to the PCIe Express slots of your motherboard, if it does have any. Next, we have the CPU 8-pin strand. Usually you'll only get one of those and they are used to only power up the 8 pins that are usually located on the top left of the motherboard. This is what provides power to your CPU so it is very crucial to your mining rig. And then we have the 24 pin that plugs into the motherboard. If you are using two ATX power supplies for one mining rig, then sometimes the motherboard you are using will contain two or three 24 pin ports like the Asus B250 Mining Expert. So in that case, you will plug the PCU that handles the CPU power in the first port and then the secondary PSU in the second port. If your motherboard has only one 24-pin port, then you will need a dual PSU adapter to run a secondary power supply, where on two ends you will plug in two different power supplies and then on the other end where it's a female header, you'll just plug it into the motherboard. And finally, the most important ones, which are the VGA strands, also known as the PCIe connectors. These will be used mainly for powering your GPUs and risers as well. These strands can come in different variations. There are single 8 pins, dual 8 pins, and one 8 pin and a 6 pin strand. The best to have the most of is the dual 8 pins because they are the most efficient for powering a high number of GPU and risers. Now sometimes you might not have enough strands to run all the GPUs and risers with the set that you got with your power supply. In that case, you will need to look into different adapters. So let's go ahead and talk about those adapters and the watts that every strand and adapter is rated for. So before we start talking about the different connections and how much watts they can provide, we want to let you guys know if you want this infographic picture right here, just join our Discord and ask for it, we'll go ahead and send it to you right away. Now let's go ahead and get started with the PCIe connections and then we'll cover the splitters later on in the adapter section. So as we can see here, one 8-pin PCIe cable or the dual 8-pin PCIe cable can carry around 288 watts. And this is basically the max wattage that they can carry. So you don't want to go above it, but you also don't want to stay at that range for too long. So now for example, let's say that we're using the dual 8-pin connector. So you have two 8-pins and then you decide to use two splitters as well. So you're connecting one splitter on each 8-pin and now you'll have a total of four 8-pins. So hypothetically, you can plug those four 8-pins into two Radeon 7s. And we know for a fact that a Radeon 7 can take anywhere from 190 watts to 300 watts and above. So if your overclocks ever reset, you'll be taking around 300 watts on stock settings. And then you're also powering two of them, so that means you're taking around 600 watts if it does reset to stock settings, and then that cable will have to handle 600 watts when it's only rated for 288 watts. So you need to make sure that you're distributing your power well enough so that you don't damage anything. So the better solution for that would be is let's say you'd use again the same thing you'd use two different splitters you have now four different eight pins you can go ahead and use one of those splitters into two risers while the other one would plug into one GPU or to be even safer you can just use one splitter so that one splitter with the double eight pin would plug directly to the GPU and then the other 8 pin, you can just use the 6 part of it and then plug it into the riser. So like that, just one strand is powering the Radeon 7 with its riser. So with your overclock settings, you'll be drawing around 190 watts to 300 like I mentioned. And then the riser won't be taking as much. And if it ever comes to a scenario where your overclocks reset, you're not putting too much strain on the cable. And hopefully by the time it does reset, you'll be able to catch it in less than 5 minutes and fix up the overclock settings or the mining rig will turn off and not keep mining hopefully. So your goal will be to make sure that if your overclocks ever reset and you're being on such tight points like that with your watts, make sure that you always try to keep your eye on it and fix the overclocks right away. So now we covered the 8 pin one which takes around 288 watts and then we can also see that the 6 pin gives only 216 watts. 
So if you use all 8 pins, you can give 288 watts. But if you only use 6 of them, then you can only give as much as 216 watts. And then that goes also with the splitters as well. So if you plug in a splitter into a 6 pin, then that same exact amount of power will be combined between the two heads of the splitter. Even if it's a 6 pin splitter to an 8 pin splitter, it will still give the same exact amount of power from the original strand. So now as for the PCIe connections, that will be it for now. So if you guys have any questions about that, just let us know in the comments below. So now let's move on to the Molex connections. So for Molex, we can draw 156 watts from the entire strand. So usually on those strands, you can have up to three to four heads. And if you have three or four heads, that doesn't mean you can take 156 watts from all of them. You can only take 156 watts total. And then as we can see here in the illustration, that it's only max two connections is recommended. So we're not really quite sure why, but since I'm assuming that this illustration is coming from a credible source and all this stuff is just from research, so nothing is proved or anything is 100%, just make sure that you also do your research and if we got something wrong, please let us know. So basically, yeah, you'll just need to only use 156 watts from those Molex connectors, which means they are more powerful than SATA. So if you ever had to power your risers with SATA, you can also choose to do it with Molex instead. And now finally, we are on the SATA connectors. So SATA connectors and using them to power risers and all that stuff is a very debatable thing. So it's something that's not one-sided at all. So there is two different outlooks to this situation. But hopefully we're hoping in this video, we will help you clarify some information and hopefully learn something new. So now let's take a look at the SATA strand. So for the SATA strand, it can provide up to 54 watts for the entire strand. Just like Molex, you have more than one connector on one strand, but it's recommended to only use one if you're connecting it to a GPU. So if you're connecting example an SSD and your RGB fan controller, it's completely fine to use both of them. And then you just want to get another strand if you're trying to connect that SATA to a riser. But remember, don't use one SATA to two different risers or three different risers. Make sure that you stick from one SATA to one riser only. And for sure, never plug in your SATA into the GPU. So don't get like a SATA to six pin and then plug that six pin into your GPU. That is pretty dangerous and it can definitely melt off the SATA cable. So now when we get into our adapters section where we cover different adapters for your risers and your GPUs, we will help you guys understand when is it right to use SATA and basically what you should use first before you think of using SATA. And as a last resort, then SATA can be fine. But it depends on which cards you're running and how much power they're taking. So now what should you do if you don't have enough VGA cables to power all the risers and GPUs? Your first option is to use splitters. Splitters plug into your VGA cable and then it will give you two 8 pins at the end. So if you have a VGA cable with two 8 pins, you'll end up having four 8 pins in total. And these splitters can be utilized differently. So based on your needs, you'll need to set them up and you should probably have extra splitters just in case. But we will go through different strategies that you guys can keep in mind and hopefully will help you next time you build a mining rig. So the first strategy is if you have a single 8 pin card, I recommend putting one end of the splitter there and then the other end of the splitter on the riser and then you'd plug in the VGA cable into that splitter. If your VGA cable is a dual 8 pin, that means you can do this to two different GPUs instead of just one. Because most of the 8 pin card GPUs take less amount of power than the double 8 pin cards. But if the card does take a lot of watts and it's one of those high power usage cards and it's only a single 8 pin, then what you can do instead of using that additional 8 pin for another GPU and riser, you can just plug it into the riser on the other GPU. In most scenarios, if you're running only 8 pin cards, you don't need to have any SATA or Molex to power your risers. But for some reason, it's not sufficient enough to just use splitters. Then you can try to use your Molex instead. And if you get cornered on a wall, then you can go ahead and try to use your SATA. Just remember, it's not efficient to use those and we recommend avoiding them whenever you can. And now for the second strategy, if you have a 2-8 pin or a 1-8 pin and a 6 pin card, then you're most likely going to be using a more powerful PSU with more VGA cables. But even then, it's most likely not going to be able to power up all the cards and the riser at the same time. So you will definitely need splitters in this case and the way to use them here is if you have a dual 8 pin VGA strand, you can plug into one of those 8 or 6 pins a splitter and then you can use those two ends of the splitter to power up a GPU 
and then the other end to power up the riser. If you do end up running short using this strategy, then you can also plug in another splitter on the other end and then like that you can power two risers instead of one riser and you can just keep going until you make sure you powered everything. This is just a rough idea of what you can do with splitters. The main thing you need to keep in mind is that you don't want to overload any of the cables. Don't put two GPUs on one VGA cable when you could have instead powered two risers. Or if the GPUs don't take too much power, then you can utilize that and power two GPUs with the same strand. The main idea is to distribute the power between all the strands and splitters as safely as possible. If after getting the splitters and using one of the strategies above didn't fill up all the risers and GPUs, then you can use Molex or SATA to 6 pin to power up your risers only if you're using low powered Nvidia cards. With AMD, I don't recommend this because AMD cards tend to draw a lot more power from the risers. We can also see an example of this on Bitspeed tripping video when he was testing the 5700 XT. He was drawing up to 75 watts from just the riser itself. And that being on stock settings, so when you're overclocking it, it will probably be taking a lot less but just keep that in mind. It is said that if a card has two 8 pins then it will be okay to power with SATA for the risers, but I would still recommend avoiding SATA whenever is possible. Now what are your options if you're cornered to use SATA or Molex? Your first option will be swapping your 8 pin strands to dual 8 pins from eBay or Amazon if you can find cables that are compatible with your PSU. Make sure it is compatible because if it's not then it will burn whatever you plug into it. This option can be difficult, so instead of you can just purchase a smaller PSU that also have a good amount of VGA ports so then you can power the rig using the two smaller PSUs. And then your final option will be using ATX power supply and a server power supply. Server power supplies can be very loud but they do provide a very good amount of 6 pins that you can plug splitters into them and we will go over the server power supplies in a different video where we will give you multiple strategies to use them as well. Okay guys, so now for buying your power supplies, there is multiple options you can go with. We're going to leave our top recommended ones in the descriptions below that you can get off of Amazon. Even for power supplies, I do recommend to find them used. Their warranties are pretty far up, so you can probably get like a 5 year warranty on a power supply by just buying it. But if you get it used, you can try to get that warranty transferred under your name. And also one more thing to mention guys, if you do like to get handy and look into different things space goats did a great video about a meter that measures basically what each 8 pin is drawing so it's great to know how much your riser is pulling and how much the gpu is pulling it's a really good video if you guys want to learn about this stuff go ahead and visit space goats channel we, we will leave the link for it in the descriptions below all right everyone so now let's go ahead and start the giveaway so in last week's video we asked you guys to go ahead and comment your ethereum classic address and in this video since it was our 2000 subscriber milestone and we thank you guys again for reaching us that point so now we are going to go ahead and select four different winners from this video and then we will go ahead and put it in the youtube random comment picker so we won't filter duplicate users because there are some people that commented more than once but that's just to reply to our comments so now we're going to go ahead and put the video url here and then we are going to filter these comments based on a specific text which will be 0x and that's just a generic start for an ethereum classic address or many other cryptocurrencies and now we can go ahead and do get youtube comments okay awesome so we have 116 people that participated in the giveaway and now we can go ahead and pick our four different winners Thank you everyone for watching this video if you enjoyed it please leave a thumbs up and if you have any questions let us know in the comment sections below and don't forget guys if you have your ethereum classic address leave it in the comment sections as well since we are picking four more winners for 25 dollars each so if you guys want to be part of that giveaway for our 3000 subscriber milestone then please go ahead and join and if you have any other tips that we can add to the power supply video that we just talked about please also leave it in the comments below and we hope you guys have a wonderful day